Whether you refer to it as foam, head, Krausen, or just the junk at the top of your beer, the foam that develops on the top of most beers is visually striking and impossible to ignore. But what is it exactly? Hey, this is Ryan from Beer by the Numbers, and today we're uncovering the mysteries of beer foam. When you pour a frosty brew, there's a pretty thick layer of head at the top, and it sticks around for a while, something that doesn't happen with a cider or a soda. But why? You get some foam off soda and also off champagne, but those bubbles don't create a head for a variety of reasons. The first thing you need is a combination of special proteins and dissolved gas in beer. The gas is usually carbon dioxide, although occasionally it can be nitrogen. Some of the beers with a fine, creamy foam, like Guinness, use nitrogen. Soda, as you're surely aware, also has dissolved gas, but it lacks one special foam-forming ingredient. Beer has proteins in it called albumins, which form complex bonds with the bitter hop compounds used to make beer, which make it easy for bubbles to stick around. These albumins have a high rate of hydrophobicity, meaning it doesn't like water at all. So in order to help alleviate its predicament of being trapped in water, it grabs a hold of a bubble of CO2 and then rises to the surface of the beer alongside the CO2 bubble. Once at the surface, the protein forms a coating on the bubbles which helps maintain the foam. Hops also come into play as the hydrophobic polypeptides derived from the bitter iso-alpha acids from hops render foam more rigid, stable, and clingy. Another helpful bubble maker is a spot for carbonation to form. Often, the inside of beer glasses will have a special etching pattern or scratch that gives the gas something to grab onto, which encourages bubbles to take shape through something known as a nucleation site. Soda or champagne bubbles will also gather on these sites, but without those special proteins, they won't stick around. Another factor in beer foam is pH level. Scientists are currently working on experiments to determine the ideal pH level for bubble formation, but there have been conflicting studies in the past. The level of alcohol also matters. Foam won't stick around if it's too high, say a strong Belgian beer in the 9-12% to range, or too low, like a really clear Bud Light which clocks in at 3.2%. The Goldilocks level for alcohol is around 5%. The exact mechanisms of how this works are still an area of research for beverage scientists and drinkers alike. A beer often tastes different when it's topped with a head of foam, and this is due to surface active compounds that move into bubble walls as they percolate to the top of your glass. Foam also carries a profound trigeminal sense, that is, taste affects what are actually perceived physically. Think of the cool sensation of mint or the hot sensation of chili peppers. Neither is derived from an actual thermal load, but rather they cause a physical perception of heat or cooling. The creamy, fluffy feel of foam can also dramatically alter the perception of any given beer by softening the overall palate. It's also important to remember that our senses of taste and smell are intimately interwoven. In fact, many times a specific characteristic that a drinker may describe as a taste is actually detected in their nasal passage. Foam brings more odor compounds to the surface of your beer, kind of like unstuffing your nose and opening up the full range of flavors. Another common beer foam question is, what is lacing? Those proteins we mentioned earlier which form a coating around every bubble interact with compounds that also happen to the rise to the top of your glass. Once these proteins and compounds begin to interact with one another, they become denser, undergoing a textural transition, and begin to stick to the side of the glass when left alone for a bit. This is why a beer consumed slowly will accumulate much more lacing than its guzzled counterpart. Finally, why does my beer have more foam? There are a myriad of answers to this question, but here's a few common and interesting variables to think about. Beer clean glassware. Detergent or other cleaning agents that may be invisibly residing in a glass can decrease the formation of foam. Your glass should be thoroughly rinsed before being filled. Etched glassware. Some glassware is etched on the bottom to create an additional nucleation site. Bubbles cling to the etching and accumulate until they're buoyant enough to break free of gravity and rise to the top of your beer, replenishing the head. Lipstick or chapstick. 
Certain waxes and compounds in lipstick and chapstick can block protein interactions and maybe even poke holes in the bubbles protective protein skins, killing the beer foam. Greasier fatty food, much like lipstick, fats from foods that are on your lips can repel foam's stability and overall length of life. Alcohol content. The alcohol in beer usually acts as a foam deterrent. After 1% ABV, ethanol's ability to deter foam progressively increases with the alcohol content. Temperature. Temperature not only affects your perception of taste, but also your beer's overall attractiveness. The process of disproportionation is when smaller bubbles become absorbed by larger ones to create a spotty, bladdery effect. This happens at high temperatures, creating poorer foam in the glass as well as more overall foam in kegs. As you can see, there's much more to beer foam than meets the eye, which can also be said for other aspects of beer. All of these factors can add or subtract from your enjoyment of your next pint.